Hello SQL fans, this is Mark Dunn back for session 16 in my series on SQL Server 2012 for developers. In session 16 we're going to cover the way transactions and locking work in SQL Server. First, just a little bit about myself. My name is Mark Dunn. I'm a Microsoft Regional Director covering the Southeast USA. I spend most of my time working in the state of Alabama for uh, state-level government agencies. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in the area of VisualBasic.net, as well as being the founder and president of Dunn Training Incorporated. We're an Atlanta-based training company that's been around for about 12 years now. I'm also a Microsoft Certified Database Administrator, solution developer, and a certified trainer. And I've been teaching students about SQL Server uh, for literally over 15 years now. The next thing we're going to talk about are nested transactions. Nested transactions are a simple concept. They're simply a transaction that's coded within the, the block of another transaction. And you can have different nesting levels if you wish. In fact, there's a system function called addAttTranCount that allows us to return the number of explicit transactions that are active on the current connection. And we'll see this used in our demo. Now, whenever you commit a transaction, the value returned by tran count uh, winds up being set equal to 1 because you're beginning one level of a transaction. Now, all the changes that are made to the database uh, during that transaction are committed. Uh, once you do a commit, it'll basically reset tran count back to zero. And whenever you issue another transaction within the scope of an existing transaction, if it's already... This gets us to our last subject in this session, which is deadlocks. Deadlocks are kind of a nasty problem, and they're a situation where we have a deadly embrace between two transactions that are actually blocking each other. As an example, let's say that transaction A requests and acquires a shared lock on our invoice line table, and then another transaction B requests and acquires that shared lock on the invoice table. Now you know those two tables are related to each other. Transaction A tries to acquire an exclusive lock on the invoice table when it wants to perform an update. But transaction B already holds a shared lock on the table. Thus, transaction A has to wait for the exclusive lock. Now, if transaction B tries to acquire an exclusive lock on the invoice line table, it's going to be a problem because it's got to wait on transaction A, which holds a shared lock on that table.